this is Anut Sethi and welcome back to another video by AMS Group of Institutes. Now today's video is part of a series called Accounting for Shares. So all those people who are new, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon so that you will get a notification whenever we upload the next video. So let's get it on with today's video. So today we will be talking about how to account for call in arrears using the second method. Now before we move to the accounting, let's do a quick recap. What is call in arrears? It is that called up amount which remains unpaid by the defaulting shareholders. Now this amount is the asset for the company. If the directors decide, they can also charge an interest rate on this. So let's move forward with the formula. The call in arrears is the number of shares held by the defaulting party multiplied by the called up amount. As we have already seen, there are two methods to account for this. Method 1 is using the call in arrears account and method 2 which we will do today without using the call in arrears account. So let's move forward with an example which is the best way to understand the concept. We will take the same example. Over here, AMS Limited had 1 lakh shares which they sold for 10 rupees each. We have been given the installments, application, allotment, first call and the second and final call for 2 rupees, 3 rupees, 2 rupees and 3 rupees respectively. Over here, Mr. A having 10,000 shares, he failed to pay the first and second final call. So we have the defaults, the first call and the second and final call. Now in this method, we will not use the call in arrears account. So let's move forward with the journal entries. Firstly, we will pass the entry for receiving the applications. So entry will be bank account debit to share application. The amount will be 1 lakh shares multiplied by the application money which was 2 rupees. So this will be 2 lakhs. So 2 lakhs bank account debit and share application 2 lakhs credited. Now since there is no pro rata allotment, we will fully capitalize these applications. So the entry will be share application account debit to share capital, the full amount 2 lakh rupees. Share application debited by 2 lakh rupees and the share capital credited by again 2 lakh rupees. Now if you check the balance of share application account, it comes out to zero. Let's move forward with the next installment that is allotment. Now as we have seen earlier in the previous video, a trend starts with the allotment. That is firstly you will capitalize the installments that is make due and then you will do the entry for receiving the payments. So let's firstly capitalize the allotment. The entry will be share allotment account debit to share capital and the amount will be 1 lakh shares multiplied by the amount that is 3 rupees. So the total capitalization for share allotment will be 3 lakh rupees. Share allotment account debit by 3 lakh and share capital credit by again 3 lakh rupees. Now as we have seen in the information, there was no default in the allotment. So we will receive the full amount. The entry will be bank account debit to share allotment 3 lakh rupees. So bank debited by 3 lakhs and share allotment credited by again 3 lakh rupees. Now we will go towards the first call. Now mind you there was a default in the first call and the second and final call. And today we are learning using the second method. We will not use the call in arrears account. So firstly let's make the money due. The entry will be first call account debit to share capital. 1 lakh shares multiplied by the amount that is 2 rupees. So it comes out to 2 lakh rupees. So first call account debit 2 lakhs to the share capital again 2 lakh rupees. Now in this method we are not using the call in arrears account. So we will only pass the journal entry for receiving the balance amount. Firstly, let's calculate how will you calculate the call in arrears? We have seen this in the previous video. The number of shares multiplied by the called up amount. So this is the first call. The called up amount is 2. The defaulting shares held by Mr. A was 10,000. So the call in arrears account or amount was 20,000 rupees. Now since we are not using the call in arrears account, we will directly do the entry for receiving the balance amount that is 1 lakh. 80,000 rupees. So 
bank account debited by 180000 rupees and the first call credited by 180000 rupees now if you take a moment and see over here the first call account there will be a balance in this there will be a debit balance of 20000 rupees now as we have calculated the 20000 rupees was again the call in arrears account so if you guys are terrified that you have left that amount no it is always present in the first call so let's move forward with the second and final call firstly again following the trend we will capitalize it the entry will be second and final call account debit to share capital the amount will be 1 lakh shares multiplied by 3 rupees so the amount is 3 lakh rupees second and final call account debited by 3 lakh rupees and the share capital credited by 3 lakh rupees now we are doing the second method we will not use the call in arrears account so firstly we will calculate the default amount it is number of shares held by the defaulter into the called up amount the number of shares is 10000 the called up amount was 3 rupees so the total is 30000 rupees that is the default amount since we are not using the call in arrears account we will only do the entry for the balance amount that is the amount which we are receiving that entry will be bank account debit to the second and final call account credited and the amount will be only 270000 the balance which we will receive so 270000 debited and 270000 credited so this is how you will account for call in arrears without actually using the call in arrears account so i would take a moment and explain to you what is the first call balance and the second call balance the first call balance we have already calculated but over here let's do it again in the working note it will be the debit amount minus the credited amount you want me to take you back to the entries so we will go there the first call amount was debited by 2 lakh rupees and in the next entry the first call amount was credited by 1 lakh 80000 rupees so now we have the information let's put it in the formula there was 2 lakh rupees as the debit amount and 1 lakh 80000 rupees as the credit amount so here we can see that the first call will have 20000 rupees debit balance so rupees 20000 and mind you this is a debit balance now we have seen in the video earlier that this is a asset and assets always have a debit balance so here you can see the debit balance let's move forward with the second and final call the second and final call amount debited minus the second and final call amount credited let's go to the entries the second and final call was debited by 3 lakh rupees it was credited in the next entry by 2 lakh 70000 rupees so here we have the variables so let's put it in the formula the debit amount was 3 lakh rupees so 3 lakhs minus the credit amount which was 2 lakh 70000 rupees so here we will have a debit balance of 30000 rupees so rupees 30000 this will be the debit balance so this is how you will account for call in arrears without using the call in arrears account so this is it for today's video if you found this video to be useful then please give it a thumbs up and share this link with the fellow peers and students if you want us to make another video on any other topic then please use the comment section below please share like comment and subscribe to the channel and as always happy learning